Hey guys, what's up? Time to do some tactics. Um, well, today I, have, today I have a very important match later on, so I wanted to do some tactics to warm up. So, yeah, here we go. Let's do some tactics. Uh, yesterday I think we achieved 2350 so we can set the 2400 goal probably yep okay uh, everything's fine on my end uh, here this here okay I'm all set let's go okay first puzzle what do we have here? Bishop takes a4. We have we're a pawn down. And uh, that queen is tied to defending the bishop. I mean maybe a move like rook a5 might win the bishop on a4, if not for the fact that he can take on e8. So maybe rook b8 for, well rook b8 makes a lot of sense. First move that makes sense. Um the thing is, uh, how is the queen defending the bishop? Our knight is preventing queen d7. Um, both the knight and the bishop are preventing queen c6. So, so rook e b8 makes a good impression as a candidate move. Um, yeah, I'm not even going to consider other moves. Uh, for example, bishop c6. Uh, yeah, bishop c6. I guess he just can check us and uh, and then move the queen somewhere. F1, for example. So yeah, the thing is, uh, moving this bishop to c6 gives white extra you know additional options but rookie b8 rookie b8 what does 
what does white do there? Um, it's not easy because uh, the bishop will be hanging on a4. Um, I don't see a clear counter counterplay. <sighs> not a clear counter threat. Um, also, the bishop on d5 is the only piece that we have, you know, the only loose piece we have, but there's no way for the queen to get out of b5 and attack that bishop. So after rook e b8, uh, after rook e b8, I'm struggling to find a good move for white. I'm not even sure what an engine would play in that position. Um, I don't see knight e7 or knight h6 useful so maybe he just gives up the queen for a rook okay maybe i'm missing something but uh, this is warming up this is the first puzzle so okay queen e2 <laughs> um maybe the puzzle is not so easy rook takes a4 queen takes h5 no that cannot be that cannot be terrible ah uh -huh. I see one idea. Rook takes a4. Yeah, now I said this piece is loose, right? So I see this idea. Rook takes a4, queen d1. But then bishop c6, right? Bishop c6 at least. Uh, hi, Kaiser. How long did, you, did it take you to master chess approximately? <laughs> I don't master chess. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's the answer. I have no title. I'm not a master, so I don't master chess. Okay, I guess I just take the piece and after... Okay, the puzzle doesn't go on. But if he forks or pieces, bishop c6 should be good enough, I guess. Good. Let's continue. Bishop check. Um... So if we take it, he's going to take with the queen, with check, then g7 is going to be weak. If the king goes to f8 to defend it, there's knight g5, which is which is very annoying. So, okay, good. Good. Um, as a material count, it is equal in the starting position. So probably taking the, the piece is good. And... Uh, we're also attacking the rook on f1. So, yeah, the rooks are not connected still. So, uh, the rooks are not connected yet. So, if we take that rook, uh, there's no other rook coming to f1. Um, I guess we have to take the piece, otherwise, uh, for example, king f8, bishop goes back to d3, and uh, position has to be better for y than than this so so i guess the puzzle has to start after after we take the bishop and now this is the real question how to defend against this uh, do we step into king f8 knight g5 or do we go to d7 do we run just run away we're threatening a rook again so we might yeah, gain some material. The thing with king f8, knight g5 is I'm not sure how to defend both uh, queen f7 mate and knight takes e6 check winning the queen. I don't see a good way. For example, king f8, knight g5, queen e8, knight takes e6 check, uh, king g8, queen takes g7 mate. So, yeah, it's, it's probably enough to 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 decide to go for king d7 king f8 knight g5 unless i see a magical move there so not a lot of ways to defend against the checkmate threat right so i guess i guess king d7 is forced and okay this is funny because the puzzle is like two forced moves uh, didn't even calculate further. Mm. 
Okay, it's just three points, but uh, the rating is 20 hundred. Uh, it's a bit high, I think, because there's no other logical move but taking the piece. And here, this walks into a lot of trouble, so yeah, okay, whatever. I expected the puzzle to continue after 95 check. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, rook takes a6, okay. Mm. This position we're upon down, but uh, I love that knight on on a3, and uh, the fact that the rook on a6 is really away from the defense, so we might have some active plans against his king, and or uh, the queen as well. For example, this probably. Now I thought that it would force queen d4, but. He can play queen c queen a1. Um, there's also a check on a8 that I'm not scared of, I guess. So I wanted to force the queen to d4 to, to have a check on c1, but maybe that check is not so important. So, okay, definitely the rook c2 is a candidate move, but maybe there's something stronger. For example, uh, the rook is loose here, it's not defended, so we might proceed our ideas with something like queen d3. But the rook has plenty of squares to go to, including rook d6, so probably queen d3 is a stupid move. Uh, now I'm seeing another good point about this is it attacks f2. It's not about getting the check on c1 only. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Um, I just remembered um, this series by Jesus de la Villa when he talked about how do you how are you supposed to calculate and which lines you should calculate first and he always repeats the most forcing ones and the most forcing ones are checkmate threats so so I'm just realizing queen f4 has a checkmate threat, so uh, I should start with that line, honestly. Uh, first calculate that line. Queen f4 has the checkmate threat of rook c1, so protecting h2 and defending c1. So queen f4 uh, move to, to consider. Mm, g3 is not possible because it loses a piece, so how does y defend against that threat? Um, there's no easy way for the rook to come back. Rook d6 doesn't help, and there's no other way for the rook to come back to help. So, knight, queen, and king must work to save the threat. It's not easy. I see king f1, which is probably losing the queen. Hmm. Or not. Okay, king f1 is a move. Um, what other moves are there? 91. 91 loses to rook c2, I guess. Um, and there's no queen d4. Um, so yeah, queen f4, really strong move. Maybe he has to... No, he can't even sacrifice the exchange. So, king f4, king f1, must be winning there. Rook check, 91, rook c2. And he might have just one check, but no, no way to defend f2 properly. And yeah, that has to be good. Queen f4, what a cute move. Okay, 91 first. I thought, uh, <laughs> I don't know why did I think rook c2 was good here, because the knight is defending c2, so okay, I guess I need to find something something else. Uh, rook here, king here, seems good, must be something better, but uh, yeah, that's a cute idea as well. Rook here, king f1, knight c2.
Hmm. Seems okay. I think I'm gonna do that. Puzzle stopped, but uh, well, it's far from easy disposition. Uh, I mean, I, I would probably need to calculate furthermore. I guess Queen C1 forcing the knight back has to be a good follow up, and then I might, I might take a pawn. Actually, the B3 pawn is really hard to 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 defend, and and then with this pawn here, it's yeah, it's clear, it's game over. Okay, good. Queen F4. That's that's cute. That's a cute move here. Good. Let's continue. D five. Um, okay. Um, we're a pawn down, and we're also with you know fighting with a knight versus a bishop. So in general, we're in bad shape. This is past. This is past. Uh, the only thing we have is this past pawn here. So I guess it all it all comes to that. Um, how to use it though? I'm seeing the idea of going e7 immediately. Um, the idea is the bishop is not in time to defend. For example, bishop f6, we take it. Bishop b4, we go 96, and I think I'm, we promote next move. So e7 basically provokes king d7. It's the only move. It's the only move. And then I go knight c7. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's all first, all very easy. There's no way black can escape from taking the pawn there, otherwise I promote. And and we win the piece. So yeah, that's forcing winning line. Good. Three points. See if we get harder puzzles. Mm, rook h f8. Oh, this is an interesting one because our intended rook here uh, is now losing. So, okay, candidate moves. First move that comes to mind is taking the rook, I mean, taking the two rooks for the queen. Not sure how to evaluate that, that endgame because we're not immediately winning, I think. We're not, right? Check if king there or there. No, that's not an immediate win, I think, but has to be considered. Probably, it's probably an easy way to, to try to play for the draw, but we don't want to try we don't want to play for the draw, yeah. Okay, another move uh, would be to take here, of course, to continue with the rook f4 idea, rook e5 idea. Um, because basically if we get rook e5, rook c5, we're checkmating black, so with queen c7, queen c8. So, yeah, trading here makes sense. And it's nice that black has no checks after the trade, so... If any, we, we might be scared about the sacrifice on f1. Rook takes f1. Although if he takes with the rook, we have additional checks. Uh, rook e5, and then the sacrifice rook f1 to go queen h1 and have some kind of perpetual. But honestly, with rook and queen on the e5, I expect uh, our king to run and, and block some, eventually block, block a check with the rook. So. So yeah, I don't see anything wrong with taking here and going rook e5. Maybe it's too easy. Maybe I need to find further subtleties in this position. But after rook takes, I expect him to take it with rook. So that's the only move. 
and then after rookie five. There might be some other winning moves, queen e8 I didn't consider, but rook e5 seems crashing. If the queen moves, the rook goes to c5, so... Yeah, okay, let's not spend more time. Let's go for... for that. Okay, that was it. Bordaf, hi buddy. Okay, four passes in a row. Mm, what do we have here? The typical position where we played a3, our opponent took on b2. That queen must be killed. That queen cannot survive. Have to win it though. Um, okay, black is putting some pressure on the d4 knight, so we can just. we cannot just sit. But uh, first move, obviously, to consider is rook a2. And after queen b6, that seems like the only move. I mean, knight c3 uh, might be also a move. But I guess we just take a piece after rook takes queen. So, so yeah, let's say queen b6. Let's call it the only move. Um, I don't know how to proceed. Ah! Our knight is defending the bishop. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Then we're good. Then we have to be good. Then we should be able to play knight takes c6. Yeah, exactly. Rook a2, queen b6, knight takes c6. And we won a piece again. The queen cannot take the knight, so we won a piece. And the knight is protecting a5, so there's no check. Okay, let's go for it. And I lost. I, I failed. Good. Now, if the solution is taking the knight, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick myself. Oh boy. Why? Why isn't okay to the solution? I don't think taking here. Could be good, but it is. So I guess the thing is, we're gonna put pressure here. But my takes it to is a threat, so I have to do it this way. Rook a2, not rook b1. And okay, he's giving up the knight, but um, back here, what happens here? C3 maybe. Hmm. Yeah. Queen c5 still. <sighs> oh, the knight is protecting b6. Oh. I got all the lines wrong. I got all the right, all the lines wrong. Oh boy. So there's no queen b6. The queen is trapped. The queen is trapped. And what's worst, in the initial position, I should have realized that. And when I played rook a2, I thought, I don't know why, I thought he could he could go to b6. That's insane. Oh boy, what a blindness, what a blind spot. So, so what's the deal here? Why can't we just play this? Yeah, he regains the piece on d4. That's the problem. Okay, not so hard to see. Nine points down. Let's move on. <sighs> I need more coffee, I think. Uh, 
Okay, what do we have here? Um, his bishop is a little bit stupid. I, I really want to, to use the, the dark squares, something like bishop here and queen here, some kind of checkmate. But uh, there's no easy way. If we move this bishop, there might be some annoying bishop f7 check or even rook f7. Where are you from? I'm from Spain. Um, check. Okay, there's no queen sack that works here, right? Queen g3 is an idea to play rook e1, but maybe it's too slow. And actually, after rook e1, if rook e1 is not a threat, he's not a check. Uh, after rook e1, he's gonna play bishop f7. Yeah. So, how to do this? Um, queen g3 is not bad, uh, as well as queen g5, but not with the idea of rook e1, with the idea of queen h4 check, bishop d4 check, and, and go for that kind of checkmate. So, queen g3 is really tempting. And basically, the threat is queen h4 check. Um, what can white do, and why? And if white can't do anything, why isn't queen g5 another way to do it? There must be a difference. Mm -hmm. Maybe the difference is rook f5. No, there's not a difference there. Maybe the difference is rook f3, actually. No, but it's the same. So queen g3, rook f3, rook e1, it's not possible. But queen g5, rook f3 might be possible. Rook e1, king h2, queen h4, rook h3, bishop e5, g3, and by a miracle we're not checkmating. Bishop g3, king g2, rook e2, maybe king f3 or king... Yeah, king f3, rook f2. Okay, it seems like mate, but maybe it's not. So, so I guess queen g3 is more accurate than queen g5. If we go, if we want to go to, if we want to go for uh, queen h4. Okay, what can white do? Why has no checks besides rook takes f6, which I totally missed the whole time. <laughs> rook takes f6 is such... Yeah. Rook takes f6 check, king takes queen f8 check, winning a rook. That's definitely a threat that I totally missed. So... So queen g3 is wrong. Queen g3 is wrong. And that's another difference with queen g5 because queen g5 defends against that threat of rook takes f6. Uh huh. So queen g3 seemed simpler, but maybe queen g5 is the only way to, to have the attack and not blunder rook takes f6. Okay. Is queen e1 possible? I don't think so, Robarton. Uh, first of all, he's not forced to take it, but even if he takes it after rook takes, rook takes, king h2, bishop e5, check, g3, I don't see how are we going to checkmate with the... Yeah, the king will escape. There's no way. There's no way to checkmate there. Um... Okay, I think queen g5. Queen g5, I don't see a good answer for white. Now that I saw the trick with rook takes f6. Uh, in this case, rook takes f6, we take with the queen and there's no problem. So what can white do? If rook f3, we might check first on... It doesn't matter really, on e1 or on h4. We're gonna check in both in both of them. And then we should be 5 check, g3 and... Uh, Probably rook h1 works, rook e2 also. Yeah, everything should work. 
I'm gonna play queen g5. I'm not sure about all the lines, but I don't see why not. Okay, I failed. Oh boy. So let's try different ideas then. Queen g3 cannot be it. Queen g3, we saw how, how we're losing there. Hey, IT, queen sack, you need to sack your queen. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I prefer not to. I prefer not to. I don't really understand why. Maybe we need to start with queen too, but <laughs> but I'm not sure why. Why would that be a solution? Queen e2 definitely prevents rook takes f6 because the rook is defended on e7, and it attacks the rook, so it might win something. But I mean, why putting our queen on a light square? B3 is an interesting idea. I thought about it and, and then I I kind of rejected it in my head. I guess it's not that terrible for him anyway. Queen f1. Queen f1 is not a move. Bishop e4, sack. Queen sack, rook e8 mate. I don't get what you're saying. And then queen takes g4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen e2 definitely will take will take uh, the g4 pawn. Okay, maybe it's just queen e2, but it's it's really stupid way to. Okay, that that come on. So I think the key in this puzzle, of course this is dangerous for him because we're gonna have a lot of checkmate threats after queen takes g4, but let's say this. Um, yeah, I guess we still have a lot of checkmate threats. The thing is, the thing of, of this puzzle is why this doesn't work. I think this is the key because it seems winning, so I guess I missed g3. Maybe g3 is what I missed. Um, let's see what the engine says. Yeah, g3 only moved to draw. All the rest are losing. Yeah, okay, g3 and it's a draw. I missed that one. Not good. A lot of points that I lost here. G3. Anyway, let's continue. Oopsie, what did I do? Maki. Maki71 has followed. Thank you, buddy. Okay, let's go for another position where we have that queen on the f-line and we want to kill that king on g1. Similar to the previous, huh? Okay, um, what do we have here? Um, we have this pawn about to promote, so I guess we need to be either checkmating or, or checkmating. For example, queen takes a3 check followed by queen takes a7 will probably lose 
Uh, first, the rook is hanging here. G5 is also hanging. Yeah, it's it's not easy. We we need to to crush. So the two moves that um considering are the check on e3, which I like the most, and queen f1. What I don't like about queen f1 is that after king h2, I don't know how to continue. Rook f2, queen takes g5, that doesn't feel good. So let's start considering queen takes e3 and see what happens. Uh, Boreda, Boreda, Boredaf, Bordaf, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but thanks for the follow, mate. And IT Swizzy baby, thank you guys for following. Hope you like the stream. Um, this is just a, a tactics session intending to warm up for the next match that I have, 8 p.m. Second half of the match with Chescudo. Rook f2 says Varti. Um, you, you mean after queen f1, king h2? Uh, then rook f2, I think queen takes g5, and, and we're probably toasted there. We're probably toasted. Um, so I'm gonna start with queen takes e3 check, I think. Let's consider that. I guess king h2 is the move that makes sense. Um, and then maybe rook f1, threatening mate. Yeah, I think that's a good line. You can get a perpetual, I think. Uh, I don't think we can get a perpetual there. In that line, but anyway, uh, Lich's puzzles are never drawing puzzles. We're supposed to win here. Um, so anyway, I like this line that we just saw. Queen takes e3, followed by rook f1, and we're in time to defend. The rook is defending f7. Um, wait. Okay, maybe it's not that great as I thought. Uh, queen takes king h2, rook f1, queen takes g5. Yeah, that's a problem. Hmm. After this puzzle, I'm gonna go grab more coffee. I feel dizzy. A rook f2 after queen e3 instead of rook f1. Queen check. No, but then we only get a perpetual. How could we win there? Hmm, hmm this is a hard one. Eddie, Eddie Elson Hernandez, thanks for the follow. Queen takes e3 check, king h2. Then what? Rook f3. Ah, rook f3. More to the point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Queen check, king h2, because king h1 probably we have check on, on h3. And then rook f3. Then rook f3. Yeah, that, that should be winning because he has one way to defend h3 if he wants, queen e6, but then we go queen f4 check and rook f1 check and then rook g1, queen f3 check, king h2, rook f2 check and we win. Yep, I think that's the line. Or that. <laughs> okay. Good. Let me show you the lines. Okay, first of all, this doesn't work because we're running out of checks. This is promoting. This is terrible with checkmate threats. 
Uh, so queen f1 is terrible. So we have to start with this. This is a no-brainer. And now king here is stupid because that gives us additional checks. So king h2 is what makes sense. And now rook f3. At first, I thought here was interesting to threaten mates after queen f4 check. Uh, the problem is this does not work after queen takes g5. So rook f3, more to the point. Rook takes pawn is checkmate and uh, he sacked the queen but I thought that the critical line was what happens if he defends against the mate and I think we have forced mate after queen check uh, rook g3 obviously leads to mate so king back king here leads to mating one so king here check here check here check and mate in next move okay let me grab some more coffee be right back. And I'm already back. Okay, so I'm gonna go on for at least half an hour. I will probably go like for 45 minutes or so. Then I'm gonna take a rest, uh, work with the dog, and then we have the match versus Chescudo. Okay, what do we have here? We have a very interesting check here. Um, we have also some ideas. No, I don't. Rook takes h6 uh, fails miserably. <laughs> Cheers, Borda. Um, okay, so we have one check. Uh, a rook is hanging, so it's not easy to to do some some checkmate threats. And the only other move that makes sense, I think, is queen f3, because it defends both things that are hanging and it also attacks something. So queen f3 or queen g4 are, in principle, my candidate moves here. Uh, let's start with the check because you need to start calculating the The most forcing ones first. The good thing about queen g4 check is that if he goes here, queen f3 is even stronger because rook takes f7 is going to be check. So, so I like queen g4 check. Uh, king h8 is mating one, so I guess the only two moves for black are uh, well, actually, king h7 leads to mate as well. So <laughs> after rook takes f7, okay, it's not quite made but it's gonna be it's gonna be very dangerous for him maybe instead of rook f7 we go queen f5 first yeah king h7 is, is asking for trouble um, it's not entirely losing but but I envision that there must be some different ways to win. For example, queen e4 check, king g7, rook f3, hitting the rook and threatening some mating attack. So I guess after the check he has to go here, but then queen f3. Do we have something stronger than that? Queen g4 check, king f8, Queen f3. Maybe queen f3 is not the move. Maybe we have to... Nah, queen f3 has to be the move. And after any check of the queen, we go to h2. Um, okay, let's put a sample line so that we gain more understanding on the position. Queen g4 check, king f8, queen f3, queen a1 check, so that he's gonna have the a5 square 
uh, after king h2, queen e5 check. Um, yeah, it's a clever one <laughs> because if g3 he has queen b2 check, it's hard to escape from the checks there. Maybe instead of king h2, we go to f2. And then after queen b2 check instead of queen e5. Uh, the problem is <laughs> king h4 he mates, he mates us. So hmm, maybe not so easy to escape the checks if we put our queen on f3 because we cannot block with the rook. Hmm, that's interesting. That's that's interesting. We will be able to play rook f4, but then our threats are more or less gone. So maybe that line is not so strong as as we thought. Then what? Queen f3 in the first place has the same issues. So if any, I would check first on g4. But maybe we have to find something better after queen g4 check, king f8. better than queen of three queen of three is so good i can't believe we can't escape the checks hi chips what's up my dear subscriber cheers chips i'm on coffee now i'm preparing for the match Queen g4 check, king f8, queen f3, queen a1 check. Hmm. This is tough. And we're upon down. This is tough. Okay, maybe this is maybe this is a little bit stupid, but how about uh, yes, we looked at Queen F three chips and and the problem with that and with the other line that I was fancying, which is Queen G four check, King F eight, and then Queen F three, because that way Rook takes F seven is a check threat. The problem with those lines is queen a1 check, and there's no way to escape <laughs> black's checks without interposing our queen. The fact of putting the queen here um, avoids us to block with the rook. Uh, the only way to block with the rook is whenever we are on h2, queen e5 check, rook f4, and then we're way too passive and we don't have any threats. But now I'm, th I'm looking at a very different idea. Queen g4 check, and look at this. Here it comes, king f8, queen e6. Defending the rook and the pawn on e3. There's never going to be a check on e5 now. We're threatening mate. We don't care about the rook on a8. I don't want to hit that rook. I want to threaten checkmate. And I don't see how black is escaping that checkmate. So, so I think that idea might be stronger. Hmm. And we already sort of decided that after this check, going here is suicidal. Well, 
going to h8 is mating one and going to h7 seems that we have at least three good moves rook takes f7 queen f5 and queen e4 so so i'm guessing king f8 has to be the move but maybe if queen e6 is so strong the engine actually goes to h7 instead of f8 but uh, yeah i think queen queen e6 has to be strong let's say queen e1 checking h2 there's no more checks queen a1 checking h2 there's no more checks yeah i really like this idea i think this has to be it let's do it ah i guess queen takes rook is <laughs> is what the engine is going to do yeah queen takes rook of course yes So it was interesting because at the first glance queen f3 seems so strong but the problem is queen a1 check. I'm not sure what the engine says. Queen a1 is stupid, queen c1 is stupid but queen a1 check. And the problem is either I allow repetition or I block like this and this is like I'm, I'm totally blocked. He just moves the rook and there's no problem. Um, and, and then I tried in my mind to, to go up with the king in a different fashion but I only got checkmated after this and um, both king g4 and king h4 allows allow queen g5 mate so <laughs> so there's no way to escape so queen f3 um, not quite working let's have a quick look at this okay this is of course mate but let's have a quick look at this because I, I'm sure this has to be losing but I didn't see all the sequence I thought queen e4 check was interesting. He has to go here. Otherwise I take the rook with check. And then I thought this might be interesting. Hitting the rook and having some threats. But I'm, I'm sure there's something stronger than that. Also, we have this check. And after this, if we're not winning here, come on. <laughs> um, I guess queen e6. Yeah, queen e6. seems strong enough because there's no easy way to defend this pawn I guess he might try this and defend it from h4 but then the diagonal is weak so yeah maybe it's not so hard to checkmate him after king h7 okay good 14 points yay next one knight takes e5 and Whoop time. <laughs> okay, so we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful here. That's the first thing I noticed. We, we have to be careful. White is threatening checkmate. I mean, we cannot go like queen a4, oh, I'm threatening mate, oh, that's beautiful, or knight b4, oh, that's beautiful. No, we can't do any of those because our opponent is threatening as modern mate here. He has two knights pointing to f7. So we gotta be really, really careful. If we want to do any of those threats here with knight b4 or queen a4, we first need to take on d6. I think. Hi, Ravelanim. How are you doing? So bishop takes knight. Um, makes sense. Siddharth. Siddharth 1711. Four seven six has followed. Thank you, buddy. Um, okay, so we can take here or we can take on e5. Those are the two moves. The problem with taking on d6 after knight f7 check, we have to take it, and uh, then after well, that's not a problem. He can't take our bishop, so he has to take the rook, and then. And then, what do we do? Knight b4 is always a, a nice resource. Knight b4 is, is nice. That's why I prefer to take on d6, not on e5. 
Knight e4 is, I mean, we can't do it in the first place because of this modern mate threat, but knight b4 basically threatens knight a2 mate. And if he takes, we have queen a1 check, queen takes b2 check, king must go to e1, and then, I mean, if we're not checkmating there, <laughs> um, maybe we're not. But it, it feels nice. Um, anyway, after bishop takes, which is my preferred move, knight f7 check, we take, he takes a rook, and then I might go knight, knight before there, but he can take our bishop, that's a problem. And I mean the bishop on, on f5. So maybe, yeah. So bishop d6, knight f7, rook f7, queen f7, and both of our bishops are hanging. This the intermediate rook f8, probably works. Queen has no other square but d5 or h5. If he goes to, if the queen goes to d5, then I have knight before idea. Um, still probably not winning. <laughs> and if the queen goes to h5, come on, h5. <laughs> probably bishop e5 should be good enough. So yeah, maybe rook f8 is a good follow-up after queen takes f7. So bishop takes d6, knight f7, rook takes f7, queen takes f7, rook f8. That seems okay. And um, because our, yeah, d8 is defended. What else can he do? Bishop takes d6. Um, he might take the... No, he can't take the bishop because of rook d8. So I think he has to go for knight f7. We take, and then instead of taking a rook, he could, again, if he takes our bishop, rook d8. So, so I think the line is forced. Bishop d6, knight f7, rook f7, queen f7, rook f8. And then queen d5, we might have knight b4, or we might have bishop e5. Maybe bishop e5 is much stronger, probably is. Hey Prash, what's up? Okay, I'm gonna go for it. Oh, and the puzzle is solved already, no! What about bishop g6 after the exchange sack? Maybe you're right, maybe this is also a move. Uh, yeah, the puzzle stopped, so I guess there's more than one good move. Um, yeah, this also seems like a move to me. I think this is um, more active, bringing the rook, keeping the bishop defended on f5. Uh, both of them, they should be more or less the same. Um, because I really want the bishop in this diagonal, so I, I don't think there's much of a difference between one or the other. Um, anyway, my point was after my queen h5 has to be stupid, so after queen here, we have this idea. Which is probably stupid, <laughs> but probably bishop here is very strong, very strong threats now. Um, rook here, knight before might be much much stronger now. Good. Okay, let's continue. Do -do -do -do. Queen takes d5. Wow, this position is crazy. What's going on here? Okay, what's going on is sun is hitting my face. Um, I'm not even sure about the material here. It seems like material is equal. Um, but we can take a knight. So what's black's idea? I guess bishop d3 is black's idea. Mm. 
so in general, two pieces for a rook should be good. The problem is that e3 pawn that is going to be pushed, and then bishop b6, and all, all that all that is problematic. Um, however, if we start with rook d1, we, we could start with knight c3, but I want to prevent bishop d3 in the future. So if we start with rook d1, what can black do? Can black attack our bishop? First of all, can black do this? No, he can't. So the knight is gonna be hanging. Um, can black sacrifice the queen and go e2? I don't think so. e2, queen e1, bishop a5, knight c3. No, I don't believe it. Also, the knight is already protecting e1. So, so rook d1. Can black attack our bishop with the queen? Yes, but only this way, only this way. Then we go knight c3, and then we take the knight in the next move. So knight c3, knight d4, we take the knight with the rook. So we never stop defending this, so there's no problem there. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. He doesn't even attack our bishop. So the logical idea here is to take the free piece. I don't see any threats by black. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. 10 points for this one. <laughs> this wasn't the hardest. Um, the rating of this puzzle is 2300. So I'm guessing... People get this wrong because... Maybe some people start uh, with uh, knight c3. Maybe that's the mistake because this is also a tempting move. But I guess then knight e4 is enough to save the material for black. Right? The good point about rook d1 is it, it does not only attack the queen and stop bishop d3, it also stops this knight d4 idea. Okay, let's continue. Uh, that rook is loose on c1, so it's a pity that white is threatening mate, otherwise we would, uh, we would take a free rook there. Um, it's an important thing to, to note though. If we ever defend the mate, um, position is really uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, we're upon up, but our development is terrible. Our king is um, highly threatened, and yeah, <laughs> we might even need to start with this check. The problem is after rook f3 we probably need to repeat, so maybe the check is stupid. Okay, if the check is stupid, we don't have a lot of options here, do we? White's threat is made. Um, first move that comes to mind is trying to use the ping, g5, and I think the other only legal move, not losing our queen, uh, that saves the mate is g6. Besides the check here, of course. So, okay, what happens after g5? g5, um, threatening queen takes rook. I expect black's only move to be rook f1. And then we might have h5. Yeah, that might be the solution. Yep. So the queen can no longer ping our g5 pawn. Um, <laughs> now, this is for sure a tactical puzzle. This cannot be a positional puzzle. <laughs> I mean, the solution to it, we're undeveloped, we're threatened, our opponent is checkmating us, and the solution is just pushing the two pawns in front of our king. Look at that. <laughs> Okay. 
This is chessy stuff, right? Chessy stuff. But we pick the material. This is the kind of puzzle I, I would never I would never show to my students. It's like pff, breaking so many rules. <laughs> yeah. Okay, eight points. Good. Let's continue. Um Okay, this is terrible placement of these pieces. I like it. I like it. Well, the most direct idea is take here and e4. That really, truly forces knight e4. The problem is that seems good enough for for white. So what else can we do? We can attack the queen, but I'm not sure why or what for. Um, after this name moves, we might have some queen d3 ideas as well. Trinsit. Trin trinxit. <laughs> trinxit. Thanks for the follow. Um, there must be something. There must be. Ah, now I see. Night takes. A very forcing line. Knight takes. Queen has to take, right? Now this rook is... I mean the knight is pinned on d2, so now we go bishop takes f3. The knight cannot take because the rook is hanging and after bishop takes f3, e4, winning a piece. Okay, that's not so difficult. And we take the piece, right? Yeah, it's all about the move order. The knight on f3 could jump to d4, but the bishop cannot, so it's lost. Okay, let's continue. Um, I want to play queen e6. That's my first idea. But since I'm not a GM, I guess I cannot do it in one go. I need to prepare it. Rawr! <laughs> Has followed. I think the notification still not shown on the screen. Um, I want to play queen e6. How can I do it? Oh, there's also this beautiful bishop g7 idea. Bishop g7 is cute. Let's forget about bishop e6, about queen e6. Bishop g7. Oh, he just takes it. Then that's a stupid. King takes g7 is good enough. <laughs> okay, it was beautiful until it wasn't. So what about queen e3? Intending queen e6. Rawr, rawr, 2040 has followed. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> okay, so I want to play this, so let's prepare it. Queen here. Okay, bishop g7 doesn't work, but bishop h8, it doesn't work either, right? No, it doesn't. It's, it's a problem. Okay, let, let's start with queen here and try to narrow the possibilities. See if we understand the position after we play some moves. Queen e3, threatening, queen e6, mate. Uh, options. King f7 is one option. Queen f5 is another option. Both of them are annoying. 
Both of them are annoying. Quite interesting, this one. Uh, there's a move we didn't say anything about, G4, that might be very helpful to prevent that queen from going anywhere. Uh, so yeah, G4, I like it a lot. G4, I think the queen must go to H6, I don't see any other move. And then life is easier, I guess. because then I can even threaten the d5 pawn. Yeah, so g4, queen must go here, and then probably queen g2 to attack the pawn without... Oh, queen f4 check. Mm. Need to keep an eye on queen f4 check and queen d2 check. So maybe I go g5. What about this? g4, queen h6, g5. Only move queen back to h5, then queen g2. He has no checks, I'm hitting d5, no way to defend it. I think this is the line. This is the most forcing line. Then he takes on e7, and then instead of taking the rook, I take on d5 with check. If rook f7, queen d8 is mate. No, it's not mate. Wait, 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 wait. So then I have to take. Okay, then he takes on e7, the queen is still on h5, and I take the rook. I have to. I have to. But the queen still still in bad shape. Yeah, that should be good enough, right? I'm, I'm kind of hesitating. But yeah, I think the alternatives are, 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 are bad, because after g4, queen h6, if I go uh, queen g2, he has queen f4, that's bad. Hey, I'm Choco, thanks for the follow. If I go queen f3, he has queen d2 check, which maybe it's not so bad, but at least he's gonna have queen a5 to defend the pawn at least, if not a lot of checks, like queen d3 check, queen f5, stuff like that. No, there's no queen f5. The pawn is on g4. But queen e4, there's queen e4, yeah. So... So, yeah, let's do it. Hey, Marianthi, the problem with queen a2 here is queen f4 check, and, and we lose the bishop. So I think g5, and now queen g2. And here gives up the, the rook, yeah. So, yeah, I think g5 was necessary because if I want to attack that pawn, I always give a check. <laughs> I mean, I always miss a check. The only way to stop queen f4 check, which is queen f3, allows queen d2 check. And to the very least, he's gonna have check and queen e4, for example, and uh, also ways to defend the pawn. So, yeah, I should not allow those checks. So g5 is cute because it, it blocks the queen. Compared to the initial position, when the pawn was here, uh, the queen is in the same place, but now has no way to, to defend. So that's why he gave the rook. Okay. 
let's continue for one or two more puzzles oh we achieved 2400 now Oof. it's time to leave it's time to... okay let's do one more puzzle one more puzzle then i'm gonna go for a walk and then in one hour from now we have the second part of the match against Chescudo. So let's do the last tactic for now. Do you have a stream schedule? Nah, <laughs> not exactly. Some days I do, some days I don't. But it tends to be the same when I do stream. It tends to be the same. Maybe I write it down somewhere, but uh, I'm really bad at committing to something so yeah I cannot promise anyway I, I do announce the streams usually on the discord channel um, okay let's try to solve this one and that's gonna be it for this session Queen f7 was played we're two pawns down but we have some attack here we have some attack here Rook takes knight is really, 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 really more than tempting. Actually, I'm not sure what what is black going to do after that. Because he's going to have to take the rook on on f7. He, black has no time to take the bishop on d3. So, yeah, rook takes, knight takes, rook takes h7, king g8, rook takes queen, something takes the rook, bishop moves, and should be winning, right? We gave up two rooks for queen and peace. Should be winning. That should be winning. I'm, I'm concerned about the, the solving this so fast. That's the way how I usually miss stuff and fail the puzzles. But what could possibly be the problem? There's any intermediate move after rook takes knight, like g4. I mean, g4 might be the only intermediate move, but then <laughs> rook h5. Uh, and to the very least, I, I take two pieces for the rook. Yeah, no, I think that has to be it. Okay. <laughs> okay, um, do I have something better than rook h5? I don't see any other move. Rook takes h7 cannot work, so... And I guess I go for this, if it worked. If it worked in the first in the first place, it has to work now. Or is there any difference between the pawn here and the and the pawn here? I don't think so. I mean, we take peace and queen for two rooks after rook takes h7. I don't believe now taking two pieces for the rook is good enough. We were two pawns down, so so yeah, I have to go for this. Okay, this wasn't so hard. It was only three points, but okay, good enough. Yeah, it's all very forcing. It's not like like I have. It's not like like I had a lot of choices. <laughs> anyway, um, that's it for now. Uh, be ready because in. Less than one hour from now, uh, we're going to be playing the second part of our match against uh, Chescudo. So tune in and see you later. And thanks, thanks for stopping by and thanks the new follows. See you. Bye bye.